We now come to the consideration of the physical architecture or implementation of our system. We use the word implementation or the phrase implementation structure because the term physical architecture conjures up images of wires and metal or bricks and mortar, but our system's design efforts may just as easily be implemented through an organizational structure using people and departments instead of the nuts and bolts that we usually expect. It is the physical architecture that performs the behaviors that satisfy the requirements for the system. In this session, we will see how the behavior is allocated to the implementation structure or physical architecture. We will also consider the fourth domain, verification and validation, or VNV as it's commonly known. It is there that we check to see that we have designed the right system and that we have designed the system right. We have seen how we develop an understanding of the system's requirements and identify and design the system behavior to meet those requirements. From there, we are going to design the physical architecture to implement that behavior. To accomplish this, we will allocate the system behavior to component elements within the system's physical architecture. As we make those allocations, we will start to identify the interaction between the components. That will allow us to determine the nature of the interfaces between components. Remember we're taking a layered approach to our model-based systems engineering process. So we are not going to develop our design all at once. We begin by sketching the design at a high level of abstraction. And as our understanding improves, we will be able to add more detail to our design. In addition, we are likely to iterate over possible allocations of behavior to components as we trade off aspects in our design. Those iterations will more than likely cause us to revisit decisions we've made regarding the design of systems behavior as well as architecture. Here we can see the allocation of functionality from the behavior hierarchy to the physical hierarchy. This shows a progressive allocation as the design is advanced from the highest level of abstraction the functional context of the physical context, through the decomposition of the layers, operate image management system to the image management system, to the final allocation of the atomic functions to the components, workstation and command center. There are a number of approaches we can take to allocating behavior to the physical architecture. Some of the possible allocation strategies are listed here. We will simply choose an allocation strategy that best fits our situation. One possibility in our example is to allocate the handling of images already in the library through one structure while handling images that need to be ordered, captured, and then distributed using another structure. The problem with this allocation strategy leaps out at us as soon as we begin to visualize it. There are a number of functions that would be duplicated between the two component structures. For example, both would need to take requests from customers, and once the image is obtained, either from storage or from the collectors, it would need distribution to the customer. So allocating by thread would most probably lead us to duplicated capacity. Additionally, we have no way of knowing which thread the request will follow until after a check of the existing images is made, so it becomes pretty clear quickly that, that this isn't an optimal allocation strategy. Another allocation strategy would be to have one component handle the internal management of the images and another the communication of the system with the outside world. This is the strategy we've chosen in our example. There may be other possible allocation strategies, and in the real world we would explore them in turn. 
searching for the best option. But for simplicity's sake, we have chosen the better of the two options that we have considered here. Taking the second approach to allocating the behavior, we have identified as necessary for the geospatial library. We can proceed to make the allocation as shown. When we finish, there is no duplication and everything ends up somewhere. The final allocation strategy results in this structure. The workstation component handles the communication with the customer and the certification authority, while the command center manages the existing images and procures any that are needed. Having completed the allocation of the behavior to the physical architecture design, we can now add detail to the physical implementation of the interfaces between the various components. Interfaces represent an abstract understanding of the connection between components, while links represent the physical implementation of the connection between the components. We can only identify the physical nature of the connection once we know the physical component that will implement that behavior. The interface block diagram is a traditional systems engineering block and line diagram representing the logical interfaces that connect components within a system or a system segment. Classically, whether working top down, middle out, or bottom up, the logical connections are known long before the physical implementations of those connections are clear. Part of the physical architecture representation set the interface block diagram is often the first architectural block diagram that you will develop, focusing first on the fact that logically A must interface with B before crossing into the details of exactly how that connection is made. The physical block diagram is a traditional systems engineering block and line diagram representing the physical links that connect components within a system or system segment. Part of the physical architecture representation set, the physical block diagram is a more, the more detailed view of the architectural composition. As our understanding of the interfaces and links become stronger, we are able to show those items identified in our behavior analysis and indicate which items will be carried over which connections. This diagram represents the logical connection between parts. Therefore, it focuses on the interfaces. It's very easy to overanalyze the situation. Ultimately, the systems engineers have to hand over a detailed design and implementation of the solution to the next step in the production process, software, electrical, and mechanical engineers, for example. The systems engineers need to know when to stop their design effort. Once every function in the behavior has been uniquely allocated to a single component, we can stop the decomposition. If the function cannot be uniquely allocated to a single component, then further decomposition of the function is required. The rule is that a function can only be allocated to a single component. However, that rule does not prevent a single component from performing multiple functions. Each function must be performed by only one component, but at any given component might perform multiple functions. Having allocated all the functions to the components that will perform them, completes the design and provides full traceability from the requirements through the logical and physical architectures. We can formalize the relationships between the behavior and the architecture through these relationships. You can now see that we have a complete description for the traceability from components in the physical architecture back to the requirements given by the customer. This provides what we know as bidirectional traceability. Every requirement is fulfilled by a behavior that is performed by a component, and every component performs a behavior that's based on a requirement. 
There are no unfulfilled requirements, nor are there any unjustified components. Once we've completed our analysis and produced our design, we need to formally confirm that the design meets the needs of the shared stakeholders. This is done through verification and validation. Verification is ensuring that the solution meets the requirements, answering the problem correctly. Validation is ensuring that we have actually used the correct set of requirements, answering the correct problem. Both of these are important, but validation is more often forgotten or given short shrift, and that is not good. Remember Russell Acuff's warning that we fail more often because we solve the wrong problem than because we get the wrong solution to the right problem. It would seem from this discussion, then, that we are waiting until the end before we check to see that we have answered the problem and answered the correct problem. But remember, we are taking a layered approach to our systems engineering process. So at each layer throughout the process, before we move on to the next layer, we have to ensure that we verify and validate the work we've done to that point. In this process, the systems engineers are going to be focused on the verification and validation of their design and creating the material that the discipline engineers will use to verify and validate their discipline's work. If ver verification and validation are only undertaken at the end of the project, failure is the likely result. The designs must be evaluated as well so that any errors can be identified early before the solution is implemented. The trick is how to evaluate the design. Often the answer is thought to lie in the construction of some kind of prototype. But the use of prototypes can create the possibility for additional errors to be introduced when the prototype is implemented. The design is reported to the team who will construct the prototype. The team interprets what they hear. The prototype is then constructed and tested. At the point of test, the original design has migrated through several interpretational steps and may be different in multiple ways. Model-based systems engineering provides a powerful solution to this problem. The MBSE process results in a model being developed that represents the design solution. The existence of this model ensures the fidelity of the verification and validation of the design because they are performed directly on that model. Since the system behavior and architecture have been developed using a formal system definition language and notation, it is possible to directly generate a simulation of the design in order to directly and formally verify and validate it. Here we can see the results of simulating the behavior of the model for the geospatial library. If the design changes, then the model will change to reflect the differences as well. Without the intermediate reporting of the design, and the construction of a prototype, there is no possibility for misinterpretation. It is the design itself that is being verified and validated. By engaging in validation and verification at every level of our design process, we can be assured that we have indeed built the right system and that we have built it right. Our solution works and it solves the right problem. Next time, we will give some particular attention to how we represent our model and to some of the hazards of our work.